Hey, what's up, animakers? Welcome back to Animaker Tips, the channel that is dedicated to showing you how to create awesome animaker videos. In this episode, I am going to reveal to you my top three secret tools that I use to improve my animaker videos. Now, this video was inspired by an email that I received from a viewer. They wanted to know if there is a place where they can get free or reasonably priced images and audios which they can be able to import into the Animaker project. The good thing is I do know a few very good resources that will definitely help you out. The first resource that I want to show you will require you to do two things. The first step is to go to Animaker.com and sign into your account. So if you're new, you'll need to click the sign up button, but I'm assuming that you've already have an Animaker account. so. Click log in and then log in into your account. Now we're going to start off the project with a blank canvas. So click this one. Once you've opened up your Animaker project, you will need to go to a site called Inkscape.org. Now Inkscape is kind of like Adobe Illustrator. It is a vector editing tool, but it's free. Now, if you've never used vectors, you should definitely start using them because with a vector, you can change the size of the image without losing any resolution and you can easily change the color of the image to fit your style for your projects or for whatever you want to do. Now to download this Inkscape program into your computer, you're going to have to click the download button. When you do, you will see you have three download options. You have one for Linux, Windows, and Source. Now, if you're a Mac user, you might be wondering, where is the Mac download button? The reason why you don't see it right now is this is the latest version of Inkscape. And at the time of this recording, they haven't uploaded the Mac version yet. But to fix that, you just need to download the 2017 version. In order to download the 2017 version, just scroll down a little bit and click this link right here. When you do, you'll see that you'll have a download option for all four platforms. So if you're a Windows user, you'd click the Windows button. If you're a Mac user, you'd have to click the Mac button. Now basically, after you click this button, you'll go through the steps of downloading Inkscape into your program. After you finish downloading Inkscape, you will need to click the Inkscape icon. It looks something like this. Now when you open it up, you will see that it has a blank canvas. Now that you have your Inkscape ready to go, you will need to go to a site called freepick.com. Now when you enter freepick.com, this site is pretty cool because it is the largest free photo site you can find. In this site you'll find photos, illustrations, vectors, and many other graphics that you can use to enhance your Animaker video. For this tutorial, I'm going to focus on vectors. So to do this, you'll need to choose what image you want to search for. So click on this search bar right here and let's just type in puppy. After you type in the word puppy and you press the search button, you will see that we have lots of images to choose from. Now, since I'm working with vectors, I'm going to click the vector filter, which is located at the top left side of your screen. I'm going to click that. And now all the images that appear now are all vector images, which means I can edit them in Inkscape. So I'm going to choose this puppy image right here. Now after choosing it, I'm going to press the download button. Now it takes about a few seconds for it to be downloaded into your system. So let's go and track down where I downloaded the vector and I'm going to show you how to unzip the file that it comes in. So this is the file that I was talking about. It's the vector file that usually comes in a zipped folder. To unzip it, you're going to right click the folder and then you're going to click extract here. Now, when you do this, you'll see a bunch of files open up. 
The one that you need to pay attention to is this Adobe Illustrator file. It looks like this. Now that we know that this vector has the Adobe Illustrator file, we need to go back to Inkscape so that way we can import it into the Inkscape program. So go back to Inkscape, click File, then click Open, and then track down that Adobe Illustrator file. When you click on this file and you press open, you will see it'll, a message saying PDF import settings. Basically, Inkscape will turn that Adobe Illustrator file into an editable vector PDF. So all you got to do is just make sure that your screen matches everything that you see here. And if it does, click OK. After clicking the OK button, you'll see that the vector is now in Inkscape. If you wanted to, let's just say you wanted to zoom in, you would press the zoom in button, which is this one right here. When you click on it, all you got to do is just click the image. Now that you see that it's truly a vector, let's zoom out. And now I want you to click the select tool, which is this one right here. Now when I click on this image, you'll notice that it's all grouped together. Typically, vectors usually are grouped together but you can always ungroup them. To do this, all you have to do is right click it, then scroll down until you see ungroup. Usually, I usually press this button several times until I see these squares appear. They look like, like dotted lines. When you see that, that means that the objects are really completely ungrouped. Now, the goal is to isolate this puppy image right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the image, move it off the canvas, and then for the rest of the image, all those other dogs, we're just going to move those off the canvas as well. The idea is I want to take this wolf puppy image or husky into the canvas and then make it bigger. That's why we had to remove all this stuff in the first place. So once that's done, move the puppy into the canvas. Now you obviously notice that the puppy image is small. If you want to scale the image, you need to press control and then click one of these arrows and then scale it up. That is the way to correctly scale an object in Inkscape. Don't be tempted to press shift. It's actually control and then use these arrows and then you scale it up. Now the next thing that I want to do is to change the color of the dog. We're only going to change it just a little bit. So let's start off with the eye. What you need to do is to click the select tool, then click on the eye. Now you obviously see it's black. So to change it to a different color, you need to look at the bottom of your screen and you will see the color wheel. We are going to have to select the blue navy color, which is this one right here. Now when I clicked on it, you'll see that it changed it from black to blue. Now for the other eye, I obviously wanted to match the same color. So what I usually do is I would click on this black eye. Then I would click this eye dropper tool. With the eye dropper tool, I would click on the blue eye. And when I do this, the black eye will turn blue as well. This is a helpful tool to use when you want to match the colors in any of your vectors. So that way you don't have to keep going back and try to figure out which exact color did I click on. So always remember that eyedropper tool is super helpful. Now we're going to change the color of the tail. So click the select tool and then pick this brownish color right here. Okay. Yeah. So, now that we have completely customized the color for this character, it's time to export it to Animaker. Now you will notice that the canvas size is a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is to adjust it and make it a little bit smaller. To change the canvas size, you'll need to go to file, scroll down until you see document properties. When you click on it, I want you to focus on this section right here. You will need to change the width and height to 500 by 500. After doing this, you will notice that the canvas becomes much smaller. 
So once that happens, just exit out. Now you are ready to export your image. You'll need to go to where we have the export menu, which is right here. And then you'll need to click page. If you notice, the page has 500 by 500, which matches the dimensions of what we created before. So this is one that I always use. I always like to use the page so that way I know that the image will be exported correctly. Now you will obviously have to choose where you want to export your image. I chose to put it in the puppy folder for this tutorial. However, you can put it to your desktop or whatever you feel comfortable putting it into. After that's done, you'll then click export. Now I want you to go back to Animaker because we will need to import this wolf puppy image into the program. So when you're in Animaker, you'll need to click this arrow button that looks like this. This is your import section. Now make sure you're in the image section right here. Then you'll see the upload button. I will need you to click on it and then track down where you kept your puppy image. Click on the image, open it up, and then it'll import into Animaker. Now you will need to categorize which folder you want it to go into. You will have a folder for characters, properties, and backgrounds. Since this is a character, you will need to select the character category. After you place the image in the characters category, just double click it so it will appear in your Animaker project. Now I just showed you how to use Inkscape in order to turn free pick vectors into actual images that you can use for your animated presentations. If you want to learn more about Inkscape, I recommend you just go on YouTube to type in Inkscape tutorials and just watch those videos that will help you improve your vector editing skills. And one last thing. Since you're getting all of this stuff from freepick.com, make sure to credit them for giving you the vectors. That's a nice way of saying thank you for using their stuff for free. So just make sure to do that. Now the second side that I like to use for my animated presentations is audiojungle.net. Now audiojungle.net is a place where I get music and sound effects for my expanded videos. So let's just say I needed to get an explainer video music for a client. What I would do is I would go to the search bar, type in explainer video music. I would go through the selection and see which music I personally would think would fit very well in a project. Now, since I don't want to get a copyright strike, I'm just going to play a little snippet of the song just to give you an idea of the kind of quality you can get when you order or music from audiojungle.net. So let's scroll up to the beginning and let's click on this one. Now that you've listened to the song, you'll notice that it's truly a professional explainer music. So if you needed to download this so that way you could use it in your own projects, you'd basically click the add to cart button and then they'll provide you with the music that you can use. Now that covers the explainer music aspect, but let me show you the sound effects provided by audiojungle.net. Now if you click the home button, which is here, You'll just need to type in, just for the tutorial's sake, explainer music sound effects. Now, when you look at the sound effects provided by Audio Jungle, you'll see that some do go for $1, but that's only a single sound effect. If you want the best bargain deals, I always look for sound packs. For example, this one is a sound pack. Now that you've listened to the track, you'll notice that you can get this sound pack for 20 bucks, which is a very good deal because you're going to get about, like for example over here, 50 sound effects for 20 bucks. That's like 40 cents 
per sound effect, which is a very good deal. That's why I personally like using Audio Jungle because you get professional sound effects and music for a very good low price. Now the last site that I want to show you is Fiverr.com. Now Fiverr.com is a place where freelancers offer their services for you. Usually for me, I always look for voice actors because I need them in order to voice my explainer videos. So let's just say for example, I was looking for a female voiceover artist who had an American accent. I would go to this search bar and type in female American voiceover. And when I click search, you'll see there are a lot of female voice actors. This is why I always use this filter right here and I always select the best of the best by clicking this button right here. After clicking the best selling filter, you will now get the top rated female voice actors on Fiverr. Now I'm going to click on this profile right here. Now I chose this profile on purpose because this lady named Soft Ones has been voicing my explainer videos. She's been doing a very good job. Let me give you a sample of the work she's done for my top and dip explainer video. So this is the script. And now what I'm going to play is the work she gave to me for this video. Whether you're going to school, working or raising a family, life can be quite demanding. This is why we believe that you should always take some time to sweeten your day with a mouth-watering treat. Introducing Top and Dip. We are a popular dessert shop. When you enter our store, you will instantly smell the sweet aroma of our delicious treats. After listening to that preview, you will see that Soft Ones is a very professional voiceover actor. The key to getting a good voiceover actor just like soft ones is to first check that person's seller ratings and also check the feedback left by the people. Now, if you wanted to buy something from the voice actor, you will need to first contact them. To contact the seller, you need to press the contact me button. After you do this, you'll need to write out your message in the box below. Just ask the Fiverr voice actor this is my project and I wanted to know how much will it cost me for you to do it for me. Now, you typically the voice actor will send a quote and when you receive this quote, you have the option to either accept it or decline it. If the quote is a good price, then obviously you'd accept it. Then after that, the person would go and just create the voiceover for you. So it's really that simple. It's pretty clear just make sure you know what you want because the more detailed you are the easier it will be for the seller and for you throughout the whole process. So those were the three sites that I use for my Animaker videos. If you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe to the channel and I would like to know out of the three sites that I showed you today which one are you actually going to use to improve your animated presentations? I'd like you to write your comment in the comment box below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.